Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Athens Clark County Library here to Drooms Tuesday tutorial this Tuesday afternoon. Um, we'll be going over the Sanborn uh, in Sanborn maps or fire insurance maps. Some people might have heard them be called before. Um, they were used through the 19th and 20th century by fire insurance companies in order to underwrite liability. Um, so that's why they're often called fire, you know, Sanborn fire maps or insurance maps, things like that. Um, you know, and his, now we really use them as historians, genealogists, historic preservationists, um, even folks who study population and migration, population and migration trends, um, urban development. Um, we all kind of use Sanborn maps in um, in our processes of research and things like that, um, mainly because they were uh, maps that really contained a lot of details about properties and urbanized areas from around uh, the 1870s, 1880s to 1977 when the when Sanborn made their last maps and published those on microfilm. Um, we have bound a, a large bound copy in the Heritage Room. If you've ever seen it, it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite pieces in the room. Um, but what I love about these fire insurance maps is they show the different structures on a piece of property, the house number. They show the building materials that the structures uh, were built out of streets, their names, the widths of the streets, whether streets had sidewalks, um, property boundaries, whether certain structures had windows and doors, how many of them fire hydrants, gas and water mains. They're really, really fantastic pieces of just raw information that provides a lot of context, historical research, and informs a lot of decisions um, with, in regards to urban planning, as well as historic preservation. So you're like, Ashley, why are you talking about all these crazy maps? We can't really see them if we're not in the heritage room. Wrong. Uh, the uh, Galileo has them online. So if we go to online library, and they were provided to us through project, um, I believe through the Digital Library of Georgia and Georgia Home Place. Um, so if we go to Georgia and Genealogy from the online library page, and then scroll to our Sanborn fire insurance maps. So we have them online from 1884 to 1922. And remember, not every city and town is are on um, Sanborn fire insurance maps. This really was for urbanized areas. So you'll notice that it was done for the city of Athens, but not for the larger Clark County area. Um, and you'll see here, it was a database project of the Digital Library of Georgia as part of Georgia Home Place. Um, and it was provided through IMLS funds and GPLS, as well as the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia. So really partnership process to get these online and digitized, which is fantastic. They're in color, they're fun to use, and there's several different ways we can search for them. So I don't want to just do an address search. I'm not, you know, I'm not interested in particular property. Also, I think it's important to remember that sometimes um, modern day addresses don't match historical addresses. So oftentimes it's better if you know where the street is just to go and find the street of the property that you're looking at and orient yourself that way um, to, to figure that out. And we talked about that when we went over the um, the uh, city directories in the previous Tuesday, uh, last week's Tuesday tutorial. So if you haven't seen that one, check that one out as well. Um, so we're actually going to just browse by city and county because we know that we're going to be looking at Athens. And there we are, cities, and it's also done by county. So it doesn't matter if I hit Clark County or Athens, it's still going to pull up the same list. So you can see here the years that we have, the Sanborn fire insurance maps, um, how many sheets were in them, things like that. So I'm interested in 1908. Let's go look at 1908. Um, Cause I haven't seen that one before. I've seen 19, um, from like 1912, 1913, 
or no, excuse me, 1923. We have that one in the heritage room and then paste it up through the 60s, through the 1960s. Um, the physical one, but you can see here, I can click on the actual squares that I want to go to, to the sheets. You'd see it's kind of a small area that they did it for, but it was really the urbanized area that they did. Um, and I don't know, can I? See, and then I can go and view all of them if I want to. I wonder, click on numbered areas to view maps. But I can't really zoom in. So sometimes, uh, you know, they're, it's not the most intuitive, but you can kind of see here, like this is the downtown center area and they always kind of highlight that with that red line kind of coming around. And you can see the river is right here. Um, so let's, let's just go here, kind of center of downtown. All right, and so we have several different options here. We can zoom in, zoom out, go back to home. It brings us back to the original size, orientation of the map, or we can go to toggle to full page. Now, when I toggle to full page, my face is going to go away. So just heads up. Um, and then, then we have this option, download MRSID image. That's a geospatial um, kind of file. So if you are working with um, maps and uh, geolocation and things like that, you can actually download that file to proprietary um, file, but you can download that and overlay a modern day map and kind of see how it changed. Um, that's where a lot of like, cool stuff can happen, um, but we don't really need to do that. So we're going to go to our full page. Ooh. And we can zoom in here. You can see East Washington Street, College Avenue. And what I love is they do show, um, you know, your water mains, how big they were. Um, if we go, so these are like the house numbers, the business numbers. And then a lot, oftentimes they'll put the business type on here. So furniture, bicycles, buggies. I love it. That was on Lumpkin, corner of Lumpkin in Washington. There's City Hall, City Prison. So located on that same property on the corner of Washington and College, East Washington and College. Federal Post Office building, which I believe is still there. So City Hall. And then all the way to Doherty Street. So you can see all those structures. So that's kind of what a you know business district would look like. Postal telephone office, jeweler, music room, drugs like a druggist. You can see here they have the fire escapes listed, things like that. So we're going to go back out of that and then let's go back to here and kind of go for a more residential area. So we're gonna go to sheet two. And again, we're gonna to go to full screen so my face might disappear. You can see here, even the, re this is what I love about the residential ones. They'll have the porch delineated here, you can see that one kind of wrapped around and there was a turreted, probably a turreted structure there. So that's 386 Hill. There's Prince Avenue and Grady. You can see Prince Avenue. So the, the street sizes were drawn to scale. So you can tell Prince was, has always been a wide, wide, wide avenue. And then they have the, the water pipes. So really, really fantastic. What I like too, so they will list the types of structures. So you can see here, this structure on 490 Hill. Um, you can see patios here, but this was, you know, the main structure of the home. And then you have the servants quarters and it looks like it goes out through a breezeway and it was 490 and a half or a third. 
can't tell if that's a one or a two. Nope, it looks like 491 out of three and then 491 out of two. So there are three st separate structures on that property. Here, you know, you get your two structures, the servants' quarters. And you'll notice that is fairly common. They would even list like sometimes, oftentimes these could be like wood houses or sheds. But, you know, and they'll label them. So these, these uh, maps and things like that, they, they're really fruitful for research. They're another one of those like supplemental things where if you're researching your family, you want to see what type of structure they lived in. It's fantastic to use. If you're looking um, more for history about your own property that you currently own, I think it's really, really fruitful and helpful, you know, to kind of see the progression over time. Folks who study urban city planning use uh, these maps and having access to, on, to them online is, is really fantastic. Even if it's a little clunky to search and to use, um, it's still, uh, it's no more clunky than trying to look at it on microfilm. Uh, so uh, they, they're they truly, truly uh, a great resource to use. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Tuesday tutorial. We'll see you next week. We got one more coming for you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.